we'll get started here shortly. We're just waiting for a couple more people to show up. Looks like we got like four or five people on right now. If you would please go into the Discord chat so that we can uh, talk more real time in there. If you can hear me and you're in the Discord chat, can you please type how I'm sounding and make sure that the sound and the live feed is going all right. You guys hear me okay in the live chat? Is it working? Yep, let me know how the sound is. If it's good, I'll go ahead and get started.
Ah, cool. Sounds fun. Okay. Well, welcome to the class. I'm glad I was able to get things rigged and set up here. My normal shop PC died on me last last weekend, and I'm waiting for some parts to come in. So, hopefully, soon. Anyways, this class is going to be service mount. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this one. And what we're going to do is, I've got a 4000 here that's pretty pretty dead, so I'm going to use it as a demo board. Hopefully I can get this thing fixed eventually, but it's more than likely going to be a parts donation board for a brand new one. So we'll do some demos on this one. It's a good example because a lot of what you guys are doing is these actual boards anyways. So it'll be kind of a, a double opportunity here to show you how to remove and put on some parts. So surface mount. What, what is it and why is it used? It's probably a good place to start. So the whole reason that surface mount has taken off and is pretty much the mainstream now and, and the standard is, number one, it's a huge space saving as far as board layouts go. If you notice, for example, on this Amiga 4000 board, every single component for the most part is up top. If you look at the bottom of the board, there's very few things on the bottom of the board, and mostly it's just capacitors and resistors down here. Um, nothing major is usually on the bottom side of the board. What it also allows you to do is help with automation. So these boards obviously were not handmade when they were getting pumped out of the factories. And what it allows you to do is create a stencil for the top of this board, and what they'll do is they'll put some solder paste along one side of the board and this will go into an autom automated you know m machine and what it'll do is it, well, it has a squeegee in it, it usually it goes from the top down uh, when I worked at Intel I worked on on some of this equipment you know repairing it and you put your bead of solder paste or flux if they, they usually clean the boards first they run through and get a, a flux treatment onto them first onto all the pads and then it'll actually run through the oven and everything and then they'll clean the board off and then they'll put the solder paste on the squeegee will come over to the top of the stencil and it'll only allow solder paste to go onto the pads of where everything is at and then it'll move on to the next location which is usually the pick and place machine and the pick and place machine will start dropping parts automatically based on where they're at in the board and if you actually look uh, let's see if we can find some on here they have some things on here called uh, called fiducials that help the light and the computer to place things usually there's there are usually little circles and what it is is it kind of gives a, a point of reference for the board to go I'm not really seeing any on this 4000 board. I know they are on here, um, but I don't see any that I can point out here at the top of my head easily. Um, and again, these were made in the early days of surface mount. So things have come a very long way since then. But if you ever look there, usually it's a circle with, with like kind of a cross in the middle of it. Some of them look like that. Some, are, some of them are different, and some of them they'll pick something like screw holes could, could be a point of reference for them and stuff like that. But if you look on a modern circuit board, you, you will see those those fiducials. Yeah, they're, they're pretty neat. And what that does is it allows a point of reference for the machine to, to know where it's at. So again, again, getting back to surface mount, what kind of gear do you use for surface mount? Well, if you're hand-sard and you're going to use the exact same kind of gear that is used for through-hole, uh, the only difference being, again, you're soldering on the top, which is why they call it surface mount. And people are afraid of surface mount for some reason. And honestly, in, in my honest opinion, I've been doing this for a lot of years, it is much easier to do surface mount soldering when you learn the techniques than it is through hole soldering. And some of you people say, oh, that's crazy talk. You know, surface mount is hard. It's small. It's, it's not hard. You just need the right tools. If you're going to you know, whip out a big ass soldering iron like this and say, I'm going to solder the 
That's not. You know, let me get something else. Okay, so I'm, just, I'm gonna solder this HDMI connector on here with, and again, this is through hole, but still, you get my point. With, with this soldering iron right here, and I'm going to th throw it on and get all these points. You know that no one, okay, someone's gonna do it, but nobody smart is going to try to solder these little dinky connections with a big ass solder and iron like this. It's just, it's not a practical way to do it. I mean, why would you want to do that? It's way too much work and it doesn't help. So that's where something like this soldering iron comes in. So this, and Steven in here knows what I'm talking about. This is a 2032 from Hacko. All my stuff is Hacko. And it's a micro soldering pen. And if you notice, it's much smaller and much easier to get into. So that that's one way that you can use a surface mount and solder much easier. So, I mean, you'll notice if I'm using this soldering pin on these three capacitors right here, that it is much easier to just get to the area where I'm working at than if I were to bust out this one and do the same thing. Sure, it works just fine, but it's not necessarily the right tool for the right job. So that is where things come in. And another thing is, is a lot of people say, well, how am I supposed to get this capacitor off of the board? It's got two connections that are the exact same time. Well, there's a couple of ways that you can do that as well. And, I, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how, how to do that on this 4000 board here. So getting back to the 4000 board, let's go ahead and, and do some live work here. Keep an eye on this capacitor. This is the first one we're going to do. And I'm going to show you with this one, and then I'm going to show you again, let's say with this one, since it's right next to it, two different techniques on how to get off, without destroying your board, a surface mount component. Now, I realize not all of you have a whole lot of money, and you don't have some of the tools that some of us do, so I'm going to show you the more common way second, but I'm going to show you the way that I do it first. So the way that I do it, and a lot of you know, you've seen my videos, is I have what's called a parallel remover. So this is the Hacko's micro parallel remover. And this is an FM2023. The problem with getting this is it's not so much that they're expensive, because they are. They are expensive. And it's not so much that they're hard to obtain and to get. It's the, the base station you need with this particular one the minimum base station that you can use is a FM202, which is very old, and you really do not want to use it with this because there's no sleep function in it. These tips are hot. <laughs> These tips are about 45 to 50 dollars a piece, depending upon where you go. Um, and they don't last forever. You can clean them and take care of them, but the problem it's not a problem, it's actually a benefit. But the thing that happens is, is inside these tips is your ceramic heating element. So they're in the actual tips. So I'll pull one out as an example so that you can see what they look like. So here's a pair of, of the tips. And if you look, you can see that there's contacts in here on, on the side. They plug straight in. So all the heat comes from within the bottom end of this. So they wear out. And when they wear out, there's a detector inside your base station that knows that they're worn out and it won't allow you to use them again. So they'll go bad and there's no way to get them working again. You just have to buy a new pair. And they typically last me, so I do this a lot, I probably go through a set of tips every two months or so. Um, so again, that's where a lot of my money for this goes. And again, I don't mind doing it because this is this is a, a stress relief for me. This is a way that I go out. So getting back to the class, I know that's what you guys are here for. We're going to go ahead and we're going to remove this capacitor using the techniques with a parallel remover. And the first thing that I can't stress enough, and I'm going to say this over and over again throughout this course, is flux. You want to use flux. Not only does flux help to lower the surface tension of the solder when it melts, it also it helps to clean the pads, it helps to remove the part easier, 
and it's just a lot less invasive and destructive if you were just to try to go straight at it and desolder without it. So you want to use flux, and you want to use good flux. You don't want to buy some crappy, cheap flux. I use Amtech. I get it from a trusted seller. Don't buy the stuff on eBay. You're going to get Vaseline or some garbage. Get some good flux. It's worth the money. If you worry about it going bad because there is exp expiration dates on it, same with solder paste. You can put it in the freezer, and it will last a long time. When I worked at Intel, we kept things in the freezer, big giant tubes of this stuff. I mean, we had literally this big around and this long of flux and solder tubes we kept in the freezer, and they will last quite a while. The thing is, if you do that, you're going to have to pull it out and get it to room temperature before you start using it. You really don't want to use frozen flux. It's it's not a good thing to do. That, but you can roll it in your hands. You can put it in here and use small little bits of it like I do. So, first thing, using a parallel remover tool. We are going to... Oh, by the way, I am ambidextrous. Don't be jealous. We are going to put some flux on the pads. So hopefully you can see this. I just put a little bit of a little ball right there coming off over here. There you go. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I like to use a pair of tweezers to, to do this instead of trying to use these to get it and lift it off. But you can do it both ways. Some people like to use a dental pick. Uh, you'll see, I think uh, Joseph Omosi does it this way. You use a dental pick and you put it on there and you do it and you just you know, kind of flick it off. That way you know when it's ready to come off. The goal is you're not going to put this on and just yank it off. Let it come off when it's ready to come off. And again, let the board work for you. Don't, don't work for the board. So get it into a nice comfortable position to where you can see what's going on. Here's the parallel movers. You're going to put them on both sides. Just enough. And when it's ready to come off, it will come off very easily. There you go. Simple, nice and clean. And you'll notice another thing too. You can see how nice those solder pads look underneath. They aren't mangled or gross or nasty. They're nice and clean. That's the magic of the flux. So that's the first way to do it is using the parallel remover. You can buy tips for these. You can buy bigger ones that are wide that you can use to take ICs and stuff off. I don't do ICs that way. It's I almost exclusively use that for capacitors, resistors, and things like that. I don't use them for taking off ICs. Okay, so the next way that we do this is using a hot air tool. So let me get my hot air tool set up here. So hot air tools, again, I use, I use HACO. This is a HACO one. There's several different versions of these. You can buy high-end ones, you can buy low-end ones. You wanna stick, and they're all pretty much the same. My preferred one to use is, again, the heating element is inside here. It's not inside the base, like some of those little mini Chinese ones that you see. They work, they're fine. But again, this allows the heat to come right out faster. And what, what temperature do you say that you use? In my case, I like to, I like to use, a, I keep it, I try to keep it as free as possible or you know the heat on as, as little as possible. So I usually start off at about 280 degrees Celsius. That's a little bit high, but Again, I'm not, hang on, let me turn up my air. Okay, I like to get it off without burning the board too much. Usually I use a preheater for this. I'm not gonna show you that in this video. We can show that later, especially since this board is bad, but a preheater I set at 200 degrees Celsius. 
and that allows me to keep things at a temperature to where they're not molten and the parts are going to fall off but it's also at a point to where when I do add air I'm only having to bring it up to another 80 degrees and get the part off real quick that's that's where a preheater will help you you don't you don't need it as long as you're going slow and, and you know what you're doing so again I said that we were going to take this capacitor off here so let's go ahead and get that into camera and this is where we're looking is here in this area again I am using my hot air tool and what you want to do with this hot air tool is you want to make sure that it comes straight down you don't want it at an angle you want it straight down that way you get the heat to flow evenly and yes once again use flux flux will help this melt even more evenly and will help it come off cleaner and be much more efficient at removing it and this stuff is this stuff is cheap so don't don't be shy with it put it on you can always you always clean it off afterwards anyways I'm just letting my thing come up to temperature it's already ready to go so again tweezers some people are hardcore and they just pluck them off I think I think John uses his fingers her tell and just plucks them off um, I'm I'm tired of burning my hands I don't do it anymore so again like I said we're gonna start I like to start up a little bit high why because I again I don't want to burn the board so I'm starting up this a little bit high and then I'm going to come in and you, if you look in the microscope view you can probably see the flux starting to go so I'm just going in little circles here then I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to go into a nice even quick circles again this isn't a race you're doing this because you want to preserve your, your whatever board you're working on or you're trying to repair it so just go evenly and again I like to use this and you'll know when it's ready you'll see it start to wiggle and just whoop, grab it pop it off there you go it's off it's nice and clean I didn't have to rip it I didn't have to use a pair of freaking needle nose and twist it off just as quick as that super simple super quick super easy All right, so before I get too far ahead I'm in a discord like I said in in the patreon live stream room and let's see if we've got any questions about what's going on hopefully this is in the line of what you guys are looking for here and and want to want to see so again we just showed two different techniques of how to remove capacitors from a board now let's go ahead and put the capacitors back on again. So the same thing applies. I don't use the parallel removers to put them on. I use a regular soldering iron to do that. And this is my soldering iron of choice. So I'm going to go ahead and use my soldering iron of choice. Hey Dale, yeah you miss everything important. Like the whole thing revolves around the first 15 minutes of this class. So you're 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 shit out of luck now, brother. I'm just kidding. You didn't really miss much, Dale, and you'll be able to replay it. it it'll, it'll be on there to you, for you to replay, too. So, again, two techniques. The parallel removers, the hot air to pop it off. So now we're going to put it back on. So we'll go ahead and we're going to do the big one first. And, again, like I said, let the board work for you. Now, before you actually start throwing capacitors on and doing things, this board is not ready to have new capacitors so what we did is we took it off now had those capacitors been leaking there would be electrolyte on here you need to clean it properly so to do that you want to use alcohol and just a cotton swab is is one of the ways to do it I mean it's better than nothing so get get it wet okay this stupid thing before you start you need to get that old solder off the way that you do that is with solder braid now I've talked about solder braid quite a bit it is an important item that you should have in your in your toolbox 
Not only is it used to fix mistakes, it's used for things like this. So you're going to grab your solder braid, you're going to grab your iron, you're going to have the flux that's already on there, and you're going to clean these pads. Right on top of the blade. Just give it a nice wipe. And there you go. That's how solder pads should look before you are ready to start adding components onto them. And you don't just throw them on again. You need to clean it. It is extremely important. There, there I've had countless cases of people sending boards to me that have had them recapped. And whoever did it just did what I did now and grabbed a new capacitor, threw it on, and soldered it on and called it good. If there's electrolytes under there and it's leaked into these vias, which is these holes that you see right on the top here, and it's gotten onto any of the traces, it's going to continue to eat away at them if you don't clean it off. So just take some alcohol, clean it up really good all the way around, get the old flux off, and you probably can hear it. It's nice and squeaky. Get it nice and clean. There you go. Now that pad is ready. Take some new flux again. Doesn't need a lot. Just add a little bit of flux on there. Oh, there's all kinds of techniques that people do for this. My preferred technique is I like to put solder on one side and lock down the new part and then add it to the other side. So how you do that? Nice clean bead. Grab the new part. And again, surface mount components just like through all have a direction. And the way that you can tell the direction on the surface mount capacitor is if you look, it looks sort of like a arrow. You have the long side and you have the tapered side. The tapered side is positive, the long flat side is negative. On a capacitor, when you look at, and at it, you have the black side and you have the silver side. The black side is negative. So we're going to go ahead and start with the negative side first. And again, this is an old capacitor. I'm reusing a capacitor, yes. Again, this board is not a board that is going to be used to do anything. And again, let, let the board work for you. Don't work for the board. So. I'm going to do this in a way that you guys can see. Normally I would have this flipped around another way so that it's comfortable, but I don't want to do that in this case. So in this case I am going to get the pad, I'm going to move the capacitor in nice and clean, it's flat and locked down, and now we're going to go ahead and do the other side. nice and clean it's locked down good to go give it a little test to make sure that it's actually there clean shiny solder joints is what you're looking for so now that capacitor is back on again so let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other one again you want to clean it with some solder braid and a solder Go ahead and do it so you can see what I'm doing. Try alcohol and clean it up nice and good. Add your flux. Dream that you are ambidextrous like I am. Ha 
one little bead, cleaner tipped. Again, this works the same way, the long side, the tapered side. Nice and clean. Again, work for the board. All right here's where we're going. Give it a test. And we're good. I just repeat that a whole mess more times and you're good to go. Usually I take everything off, clean everything up real good, put everything back on again. But if you didn't know what was went where, you could do it just like I did and just match the capacitors one for one as you're going. Um, a lot of people will take, for example, since we just replaced these and you don't want to screw it up, so a lot of people will actually take and do something like this so they know that they replace that one. I prefer to take everything off, put everything back on. So, Steven asks if the capacitive leak is IPA a good way to get the goo off. So not necessarily a really good way to get leaked pads off. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and show you that. That's, that's a good question. So if you look on this board, this is a test board again. This board is not good. This capacitor has leaked. Um, this is an old board. And if you look at it, you can see quite clearly that this capacitor is, is failing and is nasty and has leaked if you look into the microscope. So I will tilt it up a little bit more so you can see. And you can clearly see that that capacitor is leaked right here. So how would you clean those pads off? IPA is not enough. So flux and solder braid is going to be your friend in here. And you're going to notice how difficult it is to get this off. Um, with, with even hot air, it's, it's pretty tough. So I put a good amount of flux on. And I'm going to use my parallel removers in this case to get this one off and hope for the best on it. Again, you, you're going to see how difficult it is to get this off. What happens with this stuff, oh, that one actually was pretty easy. So what happens when this stuff leaks is it sort of crystallizes and turns into just this nasty, gross goo. So, I will give you a, a little bit closer view of this in the microscope here, so you can see. Let's see here. No, no. And this way. If I tilt it just enough, you can see how those pads are. So, I'll, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll clean it up a little bit with some stuff so you can see and get an idea of what it looks like under and the best way to get the junk off. Because IPA by itself, no, it's not going to be enough in the case of this one. Uh, this one is going to need need some work. So again, I'm going to take my solder and iron the same way, and I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to get as much of this off as I possibly can. And I'm going to gently sort of use it to like sand, I guess you could call it, while it's hot, and scrub this stuff off. And if you you can kind of see in the view the pad over here on the right is shiny the pad over here on the left it's there the pad is okay it's there it's just black and the reason that it's black is it's really corroded with the leakage from the electrolytes so as I have the heat on here I am going to use my solder braid and gently gently is the key run it around in circles here and it will get most of that off Again, there's a lot of flux on here. 
So you want to make sure that the flux is on because the flux is going to be important to help break down that stuff and get the corrosion off. Because flux not only helps with the solder flow, it also helps to clean and remove corrosion. So you can probably already see it in the microscope view, the silver coming through. So now in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a swab, cotton swab with some alcohol, and I'm using 99.9% .9 alcohol. It's kind of hard to find right now, but I got buy gallons of it. And now I'm going to use this to, to clean. And if you take a look at it now, you can see both pads, and I'll go ahead and zoom it back up into the microscope here again, and you can see that it is much, much cleaner. That is how you want to do it. So pretty important, actually. And I have seen boards come back to me where people just got it off as best they could like that and put another cap right over the top of that. Um, it's, it's only going to kill, kill your board. It's, it's not what you want to do. So there is a lesson in capacitors. Easy stuff. So we're going to move on now to an IC. So how do you take ICs off and put them on? There's a couple of techniques. Um, one, again, hot air is the only way that I take them off. It's, it's the way that I'm going to show you guys how to do it. And it's the easiest way to do it. That's the way we're going to do it. And again, we're going to use this section of the board again in here because this is a section on 4000s that commonly leaks. And it's a section where most damage is done because of this stupid varder that's right here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove these three chips. Actually, I'm just going to remove this one for now. We're going to remove this chip. We're going to clean it up and we're going to put it back on and when we put it on I'm going to use two different techniques that I'm going to show you. One is point to point soldering and the other is drag soldering. Uh, one takes a little more skill than the other and they use different style tips but they're very they're very easy to do and you're going to see here just how easy it is and why I think surface is much easier than through hole. So the first technique to get it off what do you think we need? Those of you that said flux, you're absolutely right. And let me check the Discord chat real fast to make sure I'm not missing anybody. So Rico chip. No, Stefan, I would not take the Rico chip off with hot air. I would take the Rico chip off using a de my desoldering gun. So point to point with a desoldering gun. I can show you that on the side. We can get it into Zoom or something sometime and I can show you that maybe Steven or Stefan I'm sorry and talk about that but no I would not use hot air to take the Rego chip off that would take too much hot air it could be done but I wouldn't do it okay so here we go again we're gonna go ahead and take this chip off and again for those of you that said flux yes flux and a lot of it so don't be shy with it Put it on, put it on again on the opposite side. Fire up your hot air again. Again, same temperature for me. I like to use 280. Mine comes up pretty fast. All right, 170, 180. So wait for it to go to 280. And again, tweezers are your friend. You want a good pair of anti-static tweezers. I prefer the hooked style ones like this because it's just easier to hold and manipulate. And again, starting from the top, I like to start up high to warm the board up. Just go in little circles, just let the board warm up. You can tell when it's starting to get good because the flux is going to melt. 
You can probably see it melting already. When it gets to that point, bring it in, and you're going to go in quick circles. So you can go side to side if you want, like this, or you can go into quick circles. Again, how do you know when it's done? You'll, you'll just kind of know. That's what the tweezers are for. You get a little bit of prodding and, and, and see, you'll, you'll know. And this one on the Varda side has quite a bit of corrosion on it, and the other side has very little corrosion. The reason that you do this straight up and down is so that you don't blow off any components around it, and it helps with the heat just to be distributed. And again, in a lot of cases when you're doing this, you're going to want to protect the board. And you could tape up other components if you want and cut it out so that just this one part is showing. I usually don't do that on things like this because I've done it so often. But you could do that with some captain tape or something. In this case, I would take off. I'm going to, I'm going to be taking off everything in this area here. So I'm not going to really bother to tape it up because it's all coming off down eventually anyways. So, again, we're going to just check it, and it's done. Flip it off, and it's off. Just that easy. So, again, I'm going to put my hot air gun away. I'm going to let this cool down a little bit. And the process of getting this ready to put a new one on is exactly the same process as the capacitors were. I'm going to take some solder braid and you'll notice that I'm constantly clipping off the end of my solder braid because you don't want to, you, this stuff is cheap, you want to have a nice clean wick of, of solder wick here so that it's taking up the solder. Now in this case I just got done using hot air and a lot of this flux is gone. The flux in this case is going to help me clean these pads up because there is some pretty significant damage if you look on these pads. They're pretty corroded. So I'm going to go ahead and put some more down just to help me keep it clean and just to help make it nice so that when the new part comes on and the new solder is on that is going to actually stick to the board properly and I don't have any cold joints or bad pads or anything like that. And again, this works the exact same way. You're going to take the flat part of your soldering iron. You're going to put the solder braid on over the top. Give it a chance to melt. Again, you want to be extremely careful when you do this because you don't want to rip the pads up. So I just go nice and slow. And again, you can see the corrosion that is underneath that chip. Again, to clean it, you do it the same way. You just be very careful because if these pads are weak, you will rip them off. And then you have to find an alternative spot for it to go. So I need to move my mirror down here. Again, if your solder braid starts to get saturated with old solder, you want to get a nice clean new piece. Or you can just move on if that's easy for you. You can okay, and you're gonna do the other side. And we're going to clean it now. alcohol Just bend this sucker out of the way and you'll notice this capacitor blew out of the way or I mean this resistor blew out of the way a little bit so I'll have to fix that down the road it's not a huge deal right now So we can fix it right now. There you go. 
Parallel remover tools are also adding tools. <laughs> Okay, so for the sake of teaching, we are going to try to reuse this one. It's pretty gross, but I don't want to use a good part on a board that is going to be remade. So I'm just going to clean this up as best I can, just for demonstrations. Okay, so how do we get this on? Two different ways. The first way, and for both methods, this is the way that I start. I like to put some flux on, and I put flux on across the whole area. Actually, we're there's three ways to do this technically. The drag solder way, the point to point, and you could use some hot air and solder paste. But I think I am out of solder paste and I don't like to do this with solder paste if it's just one at a time. It's too much prep work. So there's, there's kind of no reason to do it. So the first way is I like to put one pad that I am going to use to lock the chip in place on each corner. So in this case I am going to use this one and I just a tiny bit and I'm not going to do this one quite yet Another important thing to pay attention to on these chips. So if you look in the magnifying view and go over to it to make sure that you guys can see it. If you look in the magnifying view on this, I'm going to hold it up closer. Uh, let's see if I can get it in this stupid thing. If you look in, <laughs> God, I hate this. So I'm probably not going to be able to get it. If you look into the view here, you can sort of see a line on one end and not on the other. So if you look on the chips down below you can see the same thing. There's a, a line here and there's not here and there's also a bevel on one side. In this case the bevel is on this side here not this side just this side over here. It's beveled. That will indicate where pin 1 is at. So in the picture if you look closely you can kind of see it there is an outline of the chip drawn in the middle here and on this side there's a line with a little tick and another mark so that that would be indicate where pin 1 is at in, on this chip or the direction that the chip goes so make sure you put the chip in the right direction you can also tell on some of these chips not all the bevel is on some some don't have a bevel some have a little dot that is right above one of the pins in this case, on this one, it has both. It has a line and a dot. So there's a dot here. This is pin 1. The bevel mark here, this is pin 1. That's why I started with the solder tack mark there on the pin 1. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to let this work for me. And the way that I do that is I like to have the board this way. Hopefully you all can see this and get it in here. And I am going to line this chip up using a pair of tweezers so that it is perfectly lined up in the pin. It does not have to be perfect, perfect, but you want to get it as close as you can in the middle. And as straight as you can. And then I'm going to take and hold it down 
Again, this is an angle that I normally would not do, but I want you guys to be able to see this. That's why I'm doing it. So I'm going to hold the chip steady. I'm going to use my soldering iron. And lock it down. As you notice, it's locked down. Now I'm going to flip the board around, and I'm going to go to the opposite side of that chip. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the legs are all lined up. And if you look, they are. I'm going to put some solder on my soldering iron here. And I am going to solder the opposite corner of this chip, making sure that it is lined up nice. So now this chip is locked into place and it won't go anywhere. The next thing I'm going to do now is technique one, which is a point to point technique. This is the way that I usually do if I'm just doing like a single chip or something. So right here. Flux again is your friend. There's already some on here, but I'll put a little bit more on. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to take my solder, I'm going to take my iron, and I'm just going to point to point this. Now the flux is going to help the solder flow very well. So again, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have to do it a way that I normally don't. Let's see, hopefully you guys can still see this. I'm going to line it up. There we go. Can you see this still? Yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going to touch it and we're good same thing touch it clean the solder up we're good and just go leg to leg just a little by little the flux is going to help the solder to flow and you're only doing a little bit and this you want to keep your iron clean so every couple of legs I clean my iron Keeping it clean is very important. If it builds up, you're going to get solder bridges. So you're just going to go point to point. Getting the pad, getting the leg. Remember I put flux down before and after, so we have flux on the top and bottom. And now that I've got it on there with one side, I am going to just go back just to double check that all the solder has actually made contact with the pad and the leg and that it is good to go. Again, this is a used chip so this solder isn't flowing as nicely as it should. But you can look, it's nice and clean. There's not solder everywhere. You can take your cotton swab and some alcohol now. Clean this up. Give you an idea of how your solder looks. Not bad, huh? Pretty simple. So the second way to do this, which is a much more fun way, you're going to need to change tips. So if I bring down my handy dandy tips here, you'll notice I have several different types of tips. The tip that I'm going to use on this is a tip that is used for what's called drag soldering. Now there's lots of people that use different style tips in different ways. Some people like to use these knife ones and they kind of look like an exacto knife so we'll get this over into this area here so you can see so this is a knife tip I prefer a flat oval tip myself which you can see the difference here it's actually like an oval it's got a nice wide end here and I'm going to fill that with solder and I am going to drag it across those legs in one motion. I am not going to use any solder to go onto the chip itself. I am going to let the flux and my tip do the work for me. So you're going to hear this thing get mad at me for a second. Kind of like 
patient whose heart just stopped. Put that in there for now. Now you know I like Hacko. Nice speed change. So again, flux. For drag soldering, flux is extremely important. And again, I'm going to have to put this at an angle that I normally wouldn't be doing so you guys can see. Hopefully you can see this well. Before I start, this is the chip we're going to be doing. So that looks pretty good. Before I start, I'm going to go back to Discord real quick. Make sure that you guys don't have any tips or any questions. Looks like we're good to go. So I am going to show you the drag soldering technique now. Again, flux. Super, super important. Don't be shy with the flux. Next tip, take your iron. I'm going to do it inside here so you can see. I'm going to preload my iron's tip with some solder. So I have a bubble of solder on there now and drag soldering is just that. I'm going to take it, I'm going to put this on. Can you see? Yep, you can see. And I am going to do what I just said, literally drag it. So the key is you want the flat part of this tip to be flat with the pins. You put it on and you're just going to drag across. And it's as simple as that. That is done. Clean your tip off. You see how much faster that was. And I am going to take my cotton swab and clean that up so you can in fact see that it is soldered. All right, so there you go. If I lift this up, you can see nice, clean, super simple solder joints. Looks factory. It's a happy chip. And I don't know if you can see as well as I can in this. I can bring it up closer to the microscope so you can, in fact, see it. And there you go. You can see the difference between the two sides. Personally, I think the drag solder side is a much nicer looking set of joints than the side uh, that I point to pointed. And again, it all boils down to the right tool for the job. You notice I changed tips. Important, I wouldn't, I could drag solder with the other tip just fine. Well, not just fine, but you can do it. It's just not as easy. So you don't want to do it. Use the right right tip for the right job super important so that is some surface mount soldering for you there this class I'm like I said I'm going to try and keep these only to an hour so it's now been an hour but you saw two different techniques for capacitors for ICs now there's nothing different on this entire board that that you know, you couldn't use those two different techniques that I did to get every single chip on this board off and then put onto another board or off, get some new boards. Now, so if you wanted to do these, you just do it on a bigger scale in case of here. And even though this is a different pad configuration than these are, this is PLCC, you know, and this is, this is, you know, sock it's still the same techniques. You could still use the same point to point. You can use a smaller, tiny iron such as this if you'd like to, which is actually the way that I prefer to do these. I like to do one by one using my smaller one to go 
and make sure it's clean. And you do the exact same technique. You'll flux it. You will put a single solder point on, lock the chip down, go directly to the opposite corner, and solder one down so that it is locked in place. Inspect all the way around. Put some flux again on all four sides and go to town. You can use a knife edge and load up the edge of the knife on this side here. Flip it over like so and drag solder it across and it'll work just fine. There's all kinds of ways you can do it. There's no reason that you guys can't do this if you have even a little bit of of steady hands. Now, sure, I've done this for years. I probably make it, made it look way easier than it was, but practice, you will get it. It's not hard. It's something you can do. I really hope that this helped you guys out. I hope it was entertaining. Uh, for those of you that are watching this, everyone that's watching it should be a Patreon of you know giving me at least a dollar a month. I really appreciate it. Um, this month's patronage is patronage, whatever, however you want to say it, is going to go to hopefully fix my shop computer. It died on me. It was all donated parts that I got for free over the years. I knew it was going to go eventually. It's it's an old, rough, uh, second gen um, i7. So it, it was yeah, 20, 20 whatever, 100. It, it was time to go. But this is my laptop I'm using now. Um, I can't obviously you keep my laptop out of here, but hopefully it'll get a little bit better and I'll, my parts will come. I got a I got a new shop PC on the way. Thank you very much for being a patronage. You can see the equipment that I have, the parts that I buy, as much as I go through stuff, everything that I do this on, including the fees that I charge to re recaps and repairs and build boards for people, it all goes back into the next projects. I, I really don't make any profit on this. I do this because I like doing it. I like the community. I like chatting with you guys. I think of all of you guys as personal friends and I really appreciate the support that I get for doing it. And doing these little classes and these tips and answering questions, getting back is hopefully just my way of, of saying thanks and, and helping out. And the more people that I can teach to do this, the better our community is going to be for it. So I'm going to hang out in Discord for a little bit of time and answer questions. We can go over some things. As a lot of you know, I'm only home on Saturdays. I leave Sunday at late afternoons and go back to San Diego. That's keeping up for the next several weeks, um, all the way into um, October, actually. And I might be leaving for a trip overseas after that for three or four weeks and I'll be completely out of touch so if I disappear that's where I went again thanks for you guys support and I hope you like this I'll be hanging out in the discord patreon stream channel and probably for about another 10 minutes or so just to answer any kind of questions thanks again and we will see you in a couple weeks I'm gonna need some advice on the next tip to do or the next soldering types of course maybe we'll do connectors or something like that but um, go ahead and reply to this topic here on the Patreon page on the next things you'd like to see, and we'll make it happen. Until next time, I will see you online.